We've solved quadratics by factoring. We've solved quadratics by graphing. We've solved quadratics by completing the square. Sometimes it's good to use certain methods. Sometimes it's good to use others. Um, for example, factoring doesn't work all the time. But there is something that always works, that will always solve our quadratics if we get them equal to 0. And that is by using our quadratic formula, our quadratic formula which is x equals negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, and it has to be in standard form here. Our ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 to know what the a, b, and c would be. Um, some people might think, ah, it's a lot to try to memorize. Well, there's a lot of different songs to help you memorize this. For example, my favorite song. It goes a little something like this. X equals negative B plus or minus radical B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So there's that song. There's also, you can put it to Pop Goes the Weasel if you'd like. X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay, or you can come up with your own song. If you do, you should show me. I'd love to hear it. But one of the two songs is a good way to remember what the quadratic formula is. Let's take a look at an example now. So it wants us to solve this equation using the quadratic formula. Well, first of all, before I can do anything, i got to get it equal to 0. So let's subtract our 4 over and get it into standard form. So 5x squared minus 8x minus 4 equals 0. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, wipe, I'm going to write my quadratic formula up top just so we can see it. x equals negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac. Clap, 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 all over 2a. And it might be a good idea to write out what your a, b, and c are. So for example, my a is 5, my b is negative 8, and my c is negative 4. And now you just simply plug in all of your numbers into your quadratic formula. So x equals negative negative 8. I'll write it out even though it's a positive 8. Plus or minus radical b squared. So I'll write it out negative 8 squared minus 4ac. So 4 times 5 times negative 4 all over 2a. 2 times Hopefully the more you do this, you can, you can simplify some of these things as you go. So now I will. So x equals, well, positive 8 plus or minus the square root of 64, right? Negative 8 squared. Well, I have a negative 4 times a 5 times a negative 4. So negative 4 times 5 is negative 20, and negative 20 times negative 4 would give me positive 80. All over 2 times 5. All right? And if I look, that's 64 plus 80, that gives me 144. So I'm going to take the square root of 144 inside of there, which we all should know by now is 12. So 8 plus or minus square root of 144, which gives me 12 over 10. Well, if I look at this, I'm going to have 8 plus 12 over 10. I'm going to also have 8 minus 12 over 10. So I'm going to split this up. I'm going to separate this into two equations. I'm going to have x equals 8 plus 12 over 10. And I'm going to have x equals 8 minus 12 over 10. That's what that plus or minus means. And then I simplify each of those. So x equals 20 over 10, which gives us 2. And x equals negative 4 over 10. This becomes a negative 4. So I simplify that fraction in negative 2 fifths. Negative 4 over 10 becomes negative 2 fifths. So there's my two answers. x equals 2, and x equals negative 2 fifths. So just apply your quadratic formula, plug in your numbers for a, b, and c, and just go through and simplify. And make sure you split it off into two equations at the end. Let's try another one. 
So same thing, got to get it equal to zero. I don't like having a negative uh, number in front of my x squared, so I'm going to move these two terms over to the left by subtracting a 12x and adding an 18 from both sides. So I got a 2x squared minus 12x plus 18 equals zero. And it looks like a is 2, b is negative 12, and c is 18. And now we want to use our quadratic formula. So let's go ahead and plug in values. So x equals negative b. So negative negative 12, which gives me a positive 12. Plus or minus radical b squared. Well, b is negative 12. So negative 12 squared gives me 144. This is where I can simplify some of the steps. Minus 4ac. Well, 4, I'm going to write this one out, times a, which is 2, times c, which is 18. And so I get 8 times 18. So minus 144. I'm going to replace that with 144. All right. All over 2 way. So 2 times 2, which is 4. So you can, you can jump ahead. You can skip some of those steps if you can do that math in your head. Um, just uh, watch out for negative signs. Um, that can trick you. Well, let's take a look what happens here. So x equals 12 plus or minus 144 minus 144 is 0. Well, I don't need to put this all over 4. Well, the square root of 0 is 0. Well, 12 plus or minus 0 it's, it's going to be 0 either way, right? Or it's going to be 12 either way. So I don't even need to split off into two equations because this is just gone. So I got 12 over 4, which equals 3. So x equals 3. So let's think about this. I only got one answer here, whereas my previous one, I got two answers. Okay? And if you notice, what was inside of my square root in this one, in my first one? Ended up being 144 right here, right? That's a positive number. I can take the square root of 144. That's why I got two solutions. Whereas in my second problem, I had zero inside of my radical, which gives me zero, so I can't plus or minus anything because that's just gone. That's why I only have one solution. So going back to this last one, th these would be my two x-intercepts if I would graph that, right? If I, if I would graph my parabola, I'd have an x-intercept at 2 and an x-intercept at negative 2 fifths, so somewhere in there and somewhere in there. So it looks something like this, right? Whereas this one, my vertex would fall right on 3 on the x-intercept, on the x-axis. So I'd be here, and it'd be going up like this somehow. Okay, and that's the difference there. Let's take a look at our last scenario and see what happens. Well, if you notice, I don't, A, I got an imaginary one out front, right? There is no x term. So that means there's no B. So B is 0, because 0 times x is 0. That's why we don't write it. And C is 16. So let's use our quadratic formula. x equals negative B. Well, negative 0. I don't even need to write that, really, do I? Negative 0 plus or minus. That's just going to be gone. Radical B squared. Well, 0 squared is 0. Minus 4 times A times C. 4 times 1 times 16, all over 2 it. So 2. I want to simplify here. Don't even need my negative 0 plus 1. That's just gone, isn't it? So like the square root of negative 64. Well, try taking the square root of negative 64 on your calculator. It should work. I can't take the square root of a negative number, right? Because no number times itself is going to give you a negative. Um, so this does not work. I cannot take the square root of a negative number. So there's no solutions here. Basically, when I would graph this, what that means is, well, we should all know now that this is going to be at 16 and going up like this, because it translates it up 16 units. But it doesn't cross the x intercept or x axis, so there are no x intercepts. That's why there's no solutions. And if you notice, what's inside my square root is negative. I can't take the square root of a negative. This is going to help us. I should be able to tell how many solutions there are just by what's inside of my square root now. But when you're solving, just apply your quadratic formula, plug in numbers, um, 
Don't make little mistakes. Take your time. So what I'm trying to get at is what we call our discriminant. So that B squared minus 4AC, the part that's in the square root. That part that's in the square root. Because when I think about it, here's my quadratic formula. So this is the part that's in the square root. So I can tell how many solutions there are just by knowing what my B squared minus 4AC is. And if we take a look, this is what we already talked about. In my first example we did, we had something where my B squared minus 4AC was a positive number. And when we ended up solving, we had two solutions, didn't we? We had two solutions, number of solutions. And we noticed they cross our x-axis twice. Whereas in the second problem we did, zero was inside the square root when we took the B squared minus 4AC, which means it's right on the x-axis, my vertex is, which also means there's only one solution, right? Only cross the x-axis one. In the last problem I did, I had a negative number inside the square root. My b squared minus 4ac equal to negative. Well, I can't take the square root of a negative, which means my parabola does not cross the x-axis, which means there's no solutions. Okay, so just by using the discriminant, I can figure out how many solutions there are. So in this case, it tells me to state the value of the discriminant, then determine the number of real solutions. So I'm not solving for x here, uh, so I'm not going to apply the whole quadratic formula. All I'm going to do is do the b squared minus 4ac part to tell. So in this first case, i got to get n equal to 0, so I get this into standard form. So b squared, well, 10 squared minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 12. So I got 100, well negative 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and negative 12 times negative 12 gives me positive 144. Well I get a positive number here, so how many solutions are there? Two solutions, right? That's just what we looked at. That'd be like our first example, right? Because I'm going to have to take plus or minus 244 at the end if I did the whole quadratic formula. Whereas this next one, if I take my b squared minus 4ac, so negative 30 squared minus 4 times a times c, I end up with 900 minus 4 times 9 times 25, also 900, which gives me 0. So how many solutions do I have? One solution. Not zero solutions, one solution. Because if I did the entire quadratic formula to this, I would end up with negative negative 30 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 2a. So I end up with one solution, right? That's how that works. So if it's a positive, I end up with two solutions. If it's a 0, I end up with one solution. And if it's a negative, my discriminant's a negative, I end up with no solutions because you cannot take the square root of a negative. All right, so practice your songs. Get that quadratic formula down and just keep track of your numbers as you go through. Don't take too many shortcuts. Hope you enjoyed. Deuces.